Some of you might know that in Sony's newer cameras like the a7S III, the a7 IV, the a1 and I think the a7C as well, all have gyro data built into the cameras. This means that when you're recording, the camera's also taking note of where it's being tilted forwards, backwards, left or right, and storing this in the metadata. You can then use Sony's Catalyst Browse software to sort of decode this metadata um, and use it to stabilize your footage. If you haven't seen my video explaining the full process of this, I'll put a link down below in the description and also in a card up here somewhere. I'm not gonna go into the full process today, but they have made some updates which has made it a lot better in my opinion. So when the A7S III first came out and the gyro data started getting used, there were some caveats at the start. You had to film in the all intro format for a start and you had to film with your stabilization turned off. Now this is a big deal breaker for me because I don't film in all intro for a start. I film in the XAVCHS or S codex. Um, and also I don't like to film with stabilization turned off because you never know if Catalyst Browser is actually gonna stabilize it well enough. Um, so I never really wanted to take the risk of shooting with stabilization off getting home and realizing I can't stabilize it. Um, so I'd always prefer to use a gimbal. Now though, they've made some updates to the Catalyst Browse software, and not only can you film with stabilization on now and still stabilize it in Catalyst Browse, but you can also film in XAVCHS and S formats. This means that at least in my case, I can just film on a day how I normally would with active stabilization turned on in the HS format um, and just use Catalyst Browse for maybe a bit of a backup um, for when I've got a shaky shot that I want to stabilize a little bit better than warp stabilizer. Or perhaps on the day when I haven't got time to balance a gimbal, just get a quick shot on the active stabilization on the A7S III um, and then come back to Catalyst Browse um, and add a little bit more stabilization to it. So let's get into some examples and the first shot is a standard confetti shot at a wedding, tracking back while the guests throw confetti at the couple. Unfortunately though, my gimbal did fail on me just before the confetti shot, so I had to handhold it with the Sony a7S III, the 24mm on active stabilization. So when we open it up in Catalyst, we have the stabilization sign which wouldn't appear before. Uh, one thing it also kind of tries to grade your footage and adds a lot when you're shooting in log. Um, it's not a very nice one, so it's not always the best um, preview to have. Once you do go in and stabilize it, a lot of the time the after preview is quite jittery, so you can't always see what the final result will be. This is quite disappointing, but hopefully they fix this somewhere down the line. The amount of stabilization is measured by the crop, so you just have to adjust the crop you want, and the more crop, the more stabilization you've got. Then you're ready to export. One thing to note is always going to default to exporting in a resolution that the file started off in. So let's say you filmed in 4K, you put it into Catalyst Browse, um, and then you go to stabilize it. It tells you in the corner what sort of resolution you're getting after you've stabilized it. That's fine, but then it will upscale that to 4K after when you export it. After exporting, you should be good to go, but I always add another layer of warp stabilize in Premiere Pro, just as a finishing touch. And in most cases, that helps to add that bit of smoothness. So all the B-roll shots of the Weeble 2 in my last video were shot handheld and stabilized with Catalyst Browse, and this is one of those shots. It's the same process in Catalyst, then I import it into Premiere, add a small bit of warp stabilizer, and you're done. So this next example is a bit more of an extreme example and I was actually shooting 1080 here, which I definitely wouldn't recommend when using Catalyst Browse. It's full handheld on the 24 millimeter on the A7S III, circling around people working out. Once I added stabilization, it genuinely looked like it was from a gimbal. The final result is obviously a bit soft, so I definitely wouldn't recommend using Catalyst if you're shooting 1080, because then by the time you stabilize it, you're gonna end up with around 720p footage upscaled to 1080. And the final example here is really just to show you that one thing I wanted to mention is to avoid using auto, as sometimes it'll try and crop in a ridiculous amount, so I switch it to manual. Sometimes less is more with this software. All in all, I think this is actually a great update um, for people who like to shoot handheld on their Sony cameras. We all know that Sony doesn't have the best inbuilt image stabilization in the market, but when you add a bit of Catalyst Browse to it, it can bring it in line with other manufacturers like your Canons and your Panasonic. I do still think the results are a little bit better if you shoot with the stabilization off, um, but all in all, these updates make it a viable option for a lot more people. So should you actually use Catalyst Browse to stabilize your footage? Well, here's three reasons you shouldn't use it. 
One is in low light. Um, you're obviously gonna want your shutter to be about one over 400 at least um, for a shot like this. Because if you start introducing motion blur into it, then even though the Catalyst Browse software will stabilize it, you're still gonna see that motion blur and it's a little bit jarring. So anyone who wants to shoot low light or wants to conform to the 180 degree shutter rule, unfortunately, you're probably not gonna be using this software. The second reason is if your shot is mission critical. Obviously, if you're on a shoot um, and that shot matters a hell of a lot, you're gonna need to use that shot, um, then please just use a gimbal because you're gonna get better results overall. You don't wanna be getting back onto Catalyst Browse only to realize that the stabilization isn't gonna work how you expected. And finally, if framing really, really matters to you, um, this Catalyst Browse is kinda of gonna ruin your framing a bit because it is gonna crop in and you can't control where it crops into in the frame. So if framing is really important to you and you framed up your shot perfectly, then you go into Catalyst Browse, um, it is gonna ruin your framing a little bit there. In my case, I film a lot of weddings and sometimes getting the shot is more important than perfecting the shot with perfect framing and things like that. In some cases, balancing up a gimbal can actually make you miss a shot. So for me, it's a good peace of mind that I can just use active stabilization um, and then come back afterwards and stabilize it. It's still a really clunky process, it's quite slow, and the software does crash a lot, which is a little bit annoying, even on my high-end PC. And obviously you've got to export every file individually as well, um, so you won't want to be doing this for sort of a whole day of recording. But I reckon I'll be using this in a pinch, um, for example at weddings when I haven't got time to balance a gimbal and I'm forced to shoot handheld. Um, maybe it's not as stable as I'd like, so I'd put it into um, Catalyst Browse. And also, obviously some product shots for YouTube and things like that. Uh, when I haven't got access to a gimbal and I'm out and about, it's actually really, really useful um, for the Weeble 2 shots that you might have seen earlier on and in my other video. So that was Catalyst Browse. I've been Chris Bias. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this on cameras and traveling light, then hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.